All right, guys, we're walking around Seville now. It should be a beautiful day. Yesterday was really hot. I think it was a high of like 104 degrees. It was hot when we came out of the train and station. We got out of the train station at about 8.30 and it was still 98 degrees. So mm -hmm. today it's only supposed to be a high of 87, cloudy, which is unheard of for this part of Spain. It's usually really sunny here, but hopefully the clouds keep the heat away. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna walk around and show you guys around Seville. We started our walk through Seville on the southern side of the city, in the Parque de Maria Luisa. This park was originally part of the Royal Gardens, but it was donated to the city of Seville in 1893 by one of the duchesses, Maria Luisa. The park was renovated in the early 1900s, and visitors still flock here today. The park is filled with walkways, paths, roads, statues, buildings, and several species of plant life that make you feel like you're walking through a jungle. As we continued to walk through the park through groves of orange trees, the Plaza de España came into view. This plaza is a huge semicircular square surrounded by an enormous building that combines both Renaissance and Baroque architecture. This plaza was only built in the early 1900s, but it seems much older. Now this square is used for festivals and events. This building might even look familiar to you, as it has been featured in several films, including Lawrence of Arabia and even Star Wars. On the day we visited, there was a military event going on here. When there aren't events here, people are able to access the square, stand on the beautiful bridges that cross the man-made river, and even rent boats to paddle around the artificial lake inside the semicircle. On the lower part of the semicircle, there are several different decorative areas that are said to represent the several different South American colonies embraced by Spain. From there, we continued our walk towards the center of the city. All right, well, we just got done at the big military monument. It was really cool. Really it was cool. really nice to see. And now we're in the Jardin de Prado de San Sebastian. I think I said that right, probably not. But it's a beautiful garden here. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful park, lots of green, lots of purples and reds, and just all sorts of colors. And one interesting thing we thought, if we were in Germany right now, I mean, it's, it's about 11, 11.30. This place would be swarming, mm -hmm. and it's not really even that hot, and there is nobody here. How are we doing? Doing good. It's beautiful. We eventually came upon the next site that we wanted to see the Catedral de Sevilla. This cathedral is the third largest cathedral in the world by area, and it's really a sight to see. This cathedral was actually built on the remains of the old Moorish Mayor, which was destroyed to build this cathedral in the year 1401. However, there are still some remains of the Moorish history here, in the form of the Giralda, one of the towers of the old Moorish mosque. In one time in history, this was one of the highest structures in the world, competing only with the pyramids in Giza. Now the Giralda is a tourist attraction, and it's quite a spectacle to behold. guys we're about to go in the real Alcazar which is a supposed to be a 16th century Moorish palace so it's supposed to have really cool mosaics and a nice garden um, so yeah we'll, we'll see what we think mm -hmm. 
The Alcazar is a series of buildings and gardens that were built in the 12th and 13th centuries. Many of these buildings were modernized in the 14th century. While these buildings were actually built under Christian rule, they were heavily influenced by the Moorish style. This building was originally a fort, but eventually was turned into a palace. It's clear when you walk through from all of the details and the tile work, as well as the beautiful mosaics that have been preserved here, that royalty stood in these halls. One of the most beautiful and picturesque views that you can find in this palace is in the Patio de las Donceas, or the Courtyard of the Maidens. This courtyard is closed on four sides with beautiful architecture and a fountain in the middle. Another beautiful room in this fortress was the Salon de Embajadores, or the Ambassador's Hall. This is where royalty would meet and greet its guests. The walls are beautifully decorated, and the ceiling is covered in gold patterns and designs. We eventually made our way to the gardens that surround the Alcazar. It's hot out here. Mm -hmm. We're in the garden of the real Alcazar. It's beautiful. Just chilling. It's amazing how they get up there. This garden is beautiful and it's huge. I feel like we're in a jungle. I mean, you can hear you could hear all the animal noises and there's peacocks out here and it's just it's just really cool. Mm -hmm. Catherine's going on without me. After all that walking in the hot Spanish sun, we decided we needed to stop for a few beers and some water. All right, we just stopped for some cervezas and waters and we're going to get some uh, croquettes, some croquetas. Good stuff. Yeah, going down the with the beer. So we're walking to the bullfighting ring and kind of going through all these back alleys. But it's interesting. It's nice, it's shady, not crowded. While walking through this alley, we found ourselves listening to the beat of drums and the blow of horns. We quickly walked over to see what was going on, only to see a religious procession. There was a huge golden float, followed by an entire band that just kept going and going and going. So we're not sure what that was, we just ran into it, but we think it might have been a funeral or something like that. They looked like they were headed to the, ca the cathedral, right, Catherine? Yeah, it was very strange. I think there's always a lot of little festivals and ceremonies and things like that going on in this part of Spain, so. 
Being only a few blocks away, we decided to visit the Plaza de Toros, or the Bull Ring. Well, this is all we have time for right now, but join us in the next video where we explore the rest of Seville, including getting some tapas and enjoying some of the nightlife Seville has to offer. Thanks for watching!